Oh, I'm getting it. Okay, Doom, let's go. Foot dive time. Yo, hey. I think I still got it in me, man. I haven't played this in forever, though. Welcome back guys to episode 4 and this time we're starting things off by a new look, new deck and all that so throw out the old and strap in because we got you know some new this time around. But you haven't guessed it by now, we're playing Vanquish Soul. Now this, this deck kind of holds a special place because I've had this just collecting dust, pretty much max rarity, and it just resembles some of my favorite games to play, and that being fighting games. Now one of my first fighting games was Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which is a tag game if you guys have never played it. Uh, you pick three characters, and it kind of reminds me of the Vanquish Soul gameplay because Heavy Burger and Caesar, those kind of cards, uh, tag in and tag out your other monsters. So it feels very similar to a tag game, and also because you need specific attributes anyways. So that and having like a team, it, it resembles very closely to each other. Yo, let me know what you guys uh, played back then for fighting games or if you're still playing now because some of my favorites of course being marvel tekken stuff like that you know still play them to this day and uh definitely want to play some more now not only is there a nostalgia factor uh with this deck even though it's not that old but the deck can play some pretty nice cards including the likes of uh you know shifter and also you know cash Tira. so those cards just blend really well with the deck and uh, i didn't want to lose to shifter anymore let's let's be real like going to locals and knowing that you won't lose to shifter is a lot better of a feeling the deck also just plays decently well i mean uh if you can survive past turn one uh, and you have your engine going then you're most likely going to be able to win and outgrind the opponent and that's just kind of some of the decks that i like playing you know if we survive turn one we're, we're going off we're blasting off to the moon we're winning that match well you guys know what time it is it's mail time let's get to cracking Hey, if you guys are liking the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there. And also, while you're down there, hit the like button too. And we're going to be doing our first giveaway of the series, but this time, members only. If you want to be a member, just go down below, click, uh, click the join button, and it's just $1 a month, and you get a chance to win this. Oh yeah, the red eyes and blue eyes mat I've been using. All you have to do, comment, like, subscribe, and be a member, and you'll be entered in to, at a chance to win this mat. So, uh, hey. It's only one dollar a month, and uh, I really want to push, you know, the community to uh, let's just grow something. You know, let's uh, let's let's get to talking, guys, because uh, I don't really interact with you guys that much. But you guys get the idea. Now let's get back to the video. So I'm gonna take it to locals, or not really like a full locals. I'm gonna go there just get some test games in, because I wanted to see if we can mix Ten Pie and Vanquish Soul together. Um, and looking at it now, it didn't quite go how I think it would. So my idea was, if we play a bunch of the cards that don't use our normal summon for Ten Pie, uh, then we can potentially like normal Raisin, do a few things there, base some hand traps, and then when they think it's all gone, we just go Battle Phase, Sangin, Kaiman, and stuff like that. And also the field spell itself uh, is also able to get to Ten Pie Engine without using your normal summon. So that's also what I was thinking. But after playtesting it, it was better just to run more utility hand traps or whatever in the side deck. So we're probably going to drop that for now. I mean, maybe we might explore that later on. But as of right now, let's just play Vanguard Soul and uh, get used to that instead of just adding 10 pot cards in. All right, guys. So here's the deck list. Um, just trying some stuff out. I'm just worried about getting super comboed into Oblivion and not having the right hand traps. But to be honest, uh, looking at it in retrospect, it probably was okay just to run a few different cards just to match my attributes better because the side deck 
has like the Molcharmy, the Droll, which could have just been something else. But I think Molcharmy is still worth it. I think the drawing the cards is just really good. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. And, uh, you know, let's uh, head on over to Locals and uh, see if we can do a little bit better than before. So starting off round one at Locals. Um, I mean, you know, when you see Fenrir, it's just a good time. But, you know, we didn't see Raisin, so... I mean, we do sit on a um, Tikibu and Fenrir against Yubel, which is really strong. And, you know, he, I plug him out for a bit and he he, dev he eventually gets to a Fenrir himself. But I'm able to like remove it because I'm, I'm just prioritizing getting rid of his cash cards and you know, he keeps it alive. But we have the Jewish Swarm to do a little nice play here by going into Alsa, which was a last minute include. But looking back, it was pretty good here. I mean, being able to get rid of his Fenrir and then have one back on my side, really strong. So... He still has to deal with it, and uh, of course, we finally found Raisin through Stake Your Soul, so... This game's about over here. Uh, I mean, once we get Raisin rotation, it's just all over. And of course, uh, he makes the mistake of summoning out U-Bell, and then I just Fenrir banish the U-Bell. So now, even if he does get to combo, he would not get uh, much of anywhere, to be honest. So, it's kind of a grindy match, because I did make a few misplays, like playing into the talents and stuff like that. Because we ended up losing the Tikibu, but... We eventually outgrinded him because without his uh, his U Bell, it's just it's really hard for him to play through. So, game two, we don't really open any hand traps. I mean, we open Druid Swarm. He opens Terraforming, so he gets to pretty much uh, the the best end board almost. Uh, I mean, it's just Caesar, Rage, and Phantom. I mean, no, none of the Omni negates, but I don't really have any non-engine to deal with this. So, I mean, I kind of just go through the motions a bit here. And I'm like, nah, there's just no way. It wasn't going to do anything, and uh, yeah, it just was not good enough, so. We go first again, game three, and we have, oh my goodness, Planet Shifter. It's over. It's wraps. That's all I need. Summon the Fenrir, get a little search, and, no, never mind, no search, and then Durendal. Oh yeah, Raisin 2. See, this is where the deck really shines, is when you full combo, but that's just any deck, I guess. <laughs> so we have pretty much everything set up. Um, it's a little bit awkward, because Shifter's up. So we're going to have to lose uh, some piece of our interaction to keep everything up. But, um, you know, we have all attributes that we need. We have Raisin to summon to add another one. So we're looking pretty good. Uh, he There's not much he can really do except just um, some cash tier stuff if he draws it. So that's really what I'm on the, on the lookout for. I honestly don't really care what he's doing with the uh, all this fiend stuff. Uh, I do kind of play on his main phase because um, he tries to end it uh, at looking back it probably wasn't a good idea just because we know he's on talents so looking back i probably should have just you know let it go let everything go and then because the hard punish would have been uh talents take my fenrir and then uh he gets kind of like that started too uh but either way uh it's still under shifter so it's like okay um you know we get back to our turn it's still a little bit awkward we don't really kill him we're like 200 points off lethal i just miscalculated but we have the game ender in our uh or set on our field and that is uh you know a good old card called a uh, tikubu so yeah it's just instantly over and time was coming up anyways so hey okay we won round one going already better than the vampire deck let's go round two so this guy he's the only other vanquish soul player at our locals and uh he's not playing vanquish soul he's playing um fire king snake guy uh, we're able to talents look at his hand and i'm not sure if i hit the right thing back i hit the island because the other three cards in his hand equaled um snake eye stuff so i don't know it's a little bit awkward especially because i only really have all engine i don't have any like hand traps uh but we do get the board wipe set up and also um raisin set up so we have like about everything you want for uh for for like monster wise and attributes um so we play a bit and he goes bonfire snake eye ash um so yeah i know like pretty much i just don't know the unknown still i guess he goes ash poplar and then uh, he wants to force out the trap early so he's gonna try and uh go for a nightmare phoenix here and try and pop the back row but i mean yeah i, I just at this point i'm just flipping it because uh, i don't know what his last unknown is and i gotta get the monster out of the the his his field but he yeah, he drew the grunix that's the that's the unknown which is pretty good here, actually, because I popped a fire monster. So he uh, he pops Kieran, but I think he yeah made the mistake of thinking that it could just pop. But even even then, the the trap card protects anyways. But uh, I summon Caesar. I pop the continuous spell because he forgot to spell trap zone his uh, a fire monster with Poplar. So he has original simple spoils still in hand, which uh, can't really do anything. And 
Yeah, I already had the engine ruling, so we were able to uh, outgrind him even if he kept going. So, and he already knows that because uh, he, he's played the deck. So, game two, uh, he goes first. Ponix. Okay, we'll let that one through, and then Fire King Island. So I ash that. I don't know if it's really worth ashing before that. Uh, I kind of debated just ashing the Ponix straight up, but I guess the hard punish is like drawing one of them. So I, know, I just ended up waiting. We have Raisin, which you would think is pretty good. However. We don't have much interaction that can quite stop uh, the island because, I don't know, it's just, it's not a really good spot. Uh, just considering the, ha the hand that we have, um, he starts off with Ponix. We have the Droll, which is nice, but the uh, the odd part is we don't have the attributes for our Caesar because uh, I really want to get rid of that island. So uh, we ended up having to kind of play a little bit weird and we drilled so we don't get the add off Raisin. Uh, and here, looking at it now, I should have just put this Borger about a summon in defense position. Uh, just so I can for sure keep at least one monster on my field. Uh, I debated it for a bit. I end up putting an attack and he does have another Fire King. Uh, or I guess we already knew he had Ponix anyways. But uh, he could beat over everything and clear out the monsters. Uh, we have Raisin, but he impulses my effect to summon out from hand. So that makes it really awkward. I can't out the island. He has Cosmic for the trap card, and of course he goes off here. Fire King Island finally resolved. He gets his Fire King stuff rolling, and he has a Snake Eye card. It didn't matter which one it was. It was Oak, but that is more than enough because it gets everything. So, game three, Fenrir time. Oh yeah, and Mad Love. Not quite Raisin, not quite, but you know he debates trying to imperm, but we do have the dodge. So. Uh, that's nice and the nice thing is we have every attribute set up for our trap even though we don't have raisin so uh that should be quite a bit of interruptions here uh, especially because fenrir is also here and uh we have the caesar too so we are looking pretty good uh he tries to go for um the sacred azamina and i just think i put him on have another sinful spoils and he did he had the original sinful spoils so that's pretty good he goes for the omni negate here and uh then he Plays for a bit. He goes Olcanix, uh effect, and I ash it here. Uh, he doesn't stop it with the uh, the fusion monster, so I take this out. This is the point to just go and use the Fenrir effect because I really, really want the trap to go off. That's probably what he's scared of most is the trap. So I go Fenrir, get rid of it, uh, or try to get rid of it, get the Omni Gate out the way. So we still have the board wipe uh, live, which I think is probably one of the strongest parts here. Uh, he goes Kieran, pop Olkinix, uh summon out Ponix and all that. Uh, gets a bunch of bodies, Ponix effect. So he has no more cards left in hand. Uh, so I know that when he tries to go for um, when he tries to go for the island here, I can just uh, blow up the field because uh, he can't really interact with the um, with the Snow Devil. But uh, yeah, so clear the board and he has an open field pretty much. Uh, he took burn damage and then next turn. Uh, I already have just a bunch of uh, or I guess I just don't really have anything. I drew the raisin. That's what it was I drew the raisin. So now we know for sure the game is over um, Yeah, he, he took the burn we can blow up the monsters. We can blow it up twice because these are still alive. We still have Caesar uh, Of course just get rid of everything. Yeah, I guess nah, Actually, no, that's right. Yeah, just just blowing that up and then Yeah, we know we have game there. So winning game two. Okay game three or not game three match three Normal raisin, we found it. He goes ghost ogre, but we have the dodge. Um, we've been drawing, we've been drawing the dodge of uh, the dodge monsters uh, quite a bit, even though we're not playing that many. <laughs> um, we have everything here. Uh, I'm be real. We have every attribute set up. Our Caesar, I'm pretty sure, will be live, not quite live yet. And then we have the trap, which for sure is live. So uh, he normals core and gets his effect. Uh, he didn't get uh, the the search card, so I go mad love to uh, bounce his card here. Uh, I don't think that many people use the bounce effect or people rem or people don't really remember because not really the the card you keep on field the most with mad love so yeah we actually have that for interruption and then next game shifter ooh not good if you're the cyber dragon he goes uh machine dupe but we have imperm so I imperm it all he does is just summon another hers and then uh, he sets one and just passes turn here so I'm feeling pretty good and uh, of course we have cash here because uh, that's planet planet into fenrir fenrir is gonna get us going the attribute we need and stake your soul uh so we already had the raisin but uh you know you know what it is but this is more than enough damage uh we get a banish attack and then we also have borger burn so 
yeah, that's a very quick match three. <laughs> so on to the last match. We're 3-0. Can we do it? Can we win the locals here? Let's find out. So uh, <clears throat> here we have the Druid Swarm for his uh, his Gaddick and the Ghost Spell for his Fusion, which is enough to stop him. We go Rhoda. He ashes it. But unfortunately, that's all we have. So Druid Swarm attack and pass turn. And unfortunately for us, he doesn't really have a play except for your Fiendsmith. But we drew the uh, Tiku Boost, so he can't do anything with his Lurie. Uh, we don't have much still, so we attack and just uh, pass turn. So fortunately, he still doesn't have much because he doesn't. I don't think he has any memento cards, and uh, he drew in perm, but we have the dodge because uh, that thing was just rotting in our hand without any normal seven. So, game two, uh, I think our only hand trap is ghost spell, and I don't know why, but I use the ghost spell on the Gaddick when I definitely should have just held it for the memento uh, fusion. And also, I just forgot about. it. I realized that after I did, I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I should have just held it. So. Uh, this ghost spell did nothing, and he still, you know, once we fast forward, ends on pretty much the whole board. I mean, Caesar, the trap card, the big guy, yeah. I mean, look at my hand, it's not enough. That This this hand doesn't do anything. It's a bunch of engine, and we kind of just lose to the trap card that's set, so. Uh, going on to game three, we mostly brick. Uh, well, if the sticker soul went through, we wouldn't have bricked, but... Actually, no, we definitely did. We don't have a fire. We would have just got uh, the dark monster, but... I make a fatal mistake here because he passes back to me. I go Magnumut uh, on my on my D shifter, and I forget to attack. That would come back to bite us uh, later because uh, I go. Uh, he passes back again because I shifter again, and then I attack with the Fenrir. But had I attacked with Magnumut the turn before that, I had lethal in my hand. So, uh, I mean, we keep going. He uh, lightning storms a bunch of my monsters away, so we don't have Fenrir. We had the Snow Devil, but I think it was a, I mistimed it and don't really wipe the board in a good enough way. So he attacks directly for 8k. So only going 3-1 this time. Hey, but still better than the last week's though. That's, that's for sure. All right, guys. So that's our locals run. I mean, getting second place is pretty good compared to what was happening before that. So we'll take the doves where we can get them. And going 3-1, guys, is always, you know, going 3-1 is good. All right. Not everyone can go 4-0 at a local. So... And, uh, you know, maybe next time we'll play a little bit of a better deck. I'm not quite sure yet. Let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, I'll try and take suggestions, but sometimes it's a little hard because, you know, you have to order the cards. But you guys know what I mean. So we're going to see. I have a lot of decks, you know, kind of stored up and ready. So we'll see what we can get going for next week. But until then, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And uh, I'll see you guys later, right? Peace out.